look at the success uh, on the defensive side from last year, uh, from the, almost like the shutdown standpoint, Seth Helgeson, Corbin, uh, Dan Kelly, what was the key to their success last year, and, and what do they have to do to replicate that this year? Oh, I think obviously just, you know, they're, they're all different in their own right, but Helgeson McPherson obviously had a, uh, did a very good job as, as young kids. They're big guys. Um, you know, Helgi's maybe a little more naturally physical than, than Corbin, but they, they both, uh, you know, took away time and space. They used their, their size to their advantage. Their range was unbelievable, and they, you know, they bought into the system early and, and really just embraced it. Uh, Dan Kelly is a guy that's been with us. You know, for him, it's just tenacity and intensity, and he's hard to play against in games and practice. And um, those three guys in particular, when it comes to shutting down top lines, um, certainly did a good job. Um, all, you know, plus minus uh, some of the tops on our team. So uh, they were a huge part of our success last year. And as far as building, again, it, you know, when guys have good years, some of the, the, the next step for them, um, they may be smaller steps. And, and it's just... You know, I think all of them can improve their feet and move the puck quicker. If any of them are going to advance to the NHL, it's going to be those little things, those those fine details. Uh, I think their ability to to um, play strong defensively is there, and they just have to continue to make small improvements in their game and, and continue to get better. So, uh, you know, maybe a few question marks with what happens on New Jersey's roster. Uh, depending on, I guess, the personnel that you have in Albany, does it, does it change how you approach the defense? I mean, or is it so system-based that uh, it is what it is? No, I don't think there's going to be a change in, in, in how we approach. Uh, I think uh, another positive is, is, is the fact that, you know, everybody that's coming back, uh, there's going to get some guys that are going to obviously have some expanded roles. I mean, you're looking, you know, looking for a, a big year out of Brandon Burlon. Reese Scarlett had a, had a good year for us. Uh, um, was in and out of the lineup a little bit towards the end with the addition of, of Jelena. You know, Roman Harborenka, it's time for him to take another step, uh, showed some signs that he could, you know, potentially be a, a full-time power play guy for us. But because of our depth on D, was in and out of the lineup and had, had struggled with consistency at times. So it's time for those guys now to, to kind of you know, take the bull, bull by the horns, if you will, similar to the way uh, McPherson and Halkison did. Those guys were both, you know, uh, Mac had been with us for two years, um, and, and um, Helgi was, was just his, his first year last year, but we couldn't take him out of the lineup. And the only time we did is, is just to give him a rest. So um, it's time for those guys to uh, take the next step. And with that being said, we got some good young players coming in that are going to challenge for jumps as well. Tommy Abilene, now New Jersey, uh, brought in David Conniff to take over the defensive responsibilities. Uh, what did you know about David coming uh, before he was hired and then what has it been like you know early on here working with him? Uh, we, we had some brief conversations uh, I did with with Dave uh, when he was in Worcester uh, just regarding some players in the East Coast League uh, over the summer uh, type deal and and it, so it, it wasn't extensive um, you know if you're in the league long enough um, you, you start to know a little bit about coaches and um, you know, I, I played against uh, Roy when he was coaching in Richmond, and I played against kind of as well in the East Coast League and the American League. So I knew a little bit about his character as a player, and obviously the the history of his his father in this organization. Uh, I was I, I knew a lot about that. I think any time a, a guy's been behind a, a bench uh, at any level for for ten plus years, uh, he obviously knows what he's doing. He his responsibilities as far as running the D in Worcester. If you think, if you look at San Jose's track record as far as developing players and some of the D uh, and forwards who have come through there in the, the time that, that he's been a member of that coaching staff, uh, speaks volumes of the job they've done there in Worcester. So um, I think that was really a no-brainer for us. Yeah, the organization, as far as Lou and Chris knew him from his past history here um, as a player and, and knew his character and then his knowledge of the game, I think, um, you know, I'm going to continue to tap into that and learn more about it but when when you've had uh been in the american league developing players uh, and doing a good job of it for that long i think it was you know really a no-brainer